Um, I'd like to start with a story. Um, recently, I uh, had to, I, I was faced with the task of my uh, my cell phone, as many of you probably rely on your smartphone for just daily activities, talking to people, just apps, games, you know, things of that nature. Um, my uh, smartphone died recently, and I was uh, forced to buy a new phone. And uh, uh, as I'm sure a lot of you know, that uh, the plans out there they're tough to deal with. And uh, I, um, or I, luckily had the unlimited data on my plan still, so I was trying to make sure I kept that on my phone. And in doing so, I had to buy the phone at the non-subsidized price. So I'm sure most of you know that's like five, six hundred dollars. So I thought that that was probably a like a good trade off for me since I thought that I would probably use a lot of data on my phone, and I did because the first second month I, I used six gigabytes of data, not even trying really. <laughs> um, after I purchased my phone, I wanted to. Uh, like check around see if like, this was kind of a trend that a lot of carriers are getting rid of their unlimited data plans and sure enough uh, AT&T like the second one of the largest companies is also eliminating their plans as well I have I currently have Verizon so they're obviously getting rid of theirs so that I want to keep on um, many uh, many of today's carriers are, con are always changing their plans to keep up with the dynamic environment of their market. And uh, they're doing this because they're like the number of people coming into a given network are changing over time. And uh, today I will, uh, I would like to explore some of the reasons behind why the two major US carriers are uh, phasing out their unlimited data plans and how it affects you as a consumer and the market. Uh, I will begin with a, uh, or I will begin with, uh, showing that uh, many people who have cell phone plans in America also have a data plan. Uh, then I will move, by, uh, move on to two brief statements by executives in the wireless industry. Then I will explain the, a practice uh, carried out by uh, self, the, uh, the two major carriers where the, uh, called throttling. And finally, I will uh, end with uh, how some carriers are choosing to keep their unlimited data plans. Uh, I'll now talk about how uh, As you can see, that uh, many people, or 96% uh, of people who have a cell phone plan in the, Uni in the United States have a data plan. And uh, this, this was uh, from the study, the Nielsen ratings that were released in February of this year. And this is a significant portion of the people who have cell phone plans have data. And uh, the, apparently, the average bill for uh, typical consumer is $93 for a smartphone plan. And next I have a, uh, this is a graph on AT&T's website showing that uh, from the year 2006 to 2011, their, the number of users on their network has more than quintupled, which is a significant number of people, which is one of the reasons why they were trying to, they're, changing their plans to keep up with the amount of people they're dealing with on their plans, to try to appeal to more people. Uh, now that you have a feel for how many people that uh, have data plans and will be affected by change, changes away from the unlimited data plans, I will uh, now share two statements from uh, executives in the wireless industry. Um, one of the, uh, the first one is from uh, the Verizon CFO, Fran Chameau, speaking at an investor conference. 
he, uh, he stated that uh, unlimited is just a word. I think a lot of consumers think they consume more data than they do. This is uh, backed up by uh, a statement by uh, Roger Etner, the senior vice president and head of research for the firm Nielsen of the Nielsen ratings. He, he makes the claim that uh, what AT&T's numbers show and our own here at Nielsen is that most people are using a lot, data, a lot less data than they do to the tune of most people, like majority of people use two to three gigabytes. So the, uh, the companies AT&T and Verizon have decided to phase out their unlimited data plans in favor of those to appeal to uh, the customers. They're doing so trying to lower the price, change the price of their data plans, which this is a, a AT&T, the new, or one of their newer uh, AT&T uh, data plans. And they're, uh, like, as you can see, the, the smartphones, you can't get the unlimited data anymore. So if you get a new phone, you can't get that, which is what uh, they're trying to get you away from because you get a lot of people on the networks with using a lot of data, you're gonna be uh, affected by some speed drops and stuff, and oops. this is the similar thing for Verizon. This is one of their basic share data plans, which is what they're trying to do, because uh, people were worried at first when they said that uh, unlimited, like there was no more unlimited data, they were saying that they're gonna switch over to shared data plans, which may or may not be a good thing. May not. For you. Um, <laughs> Next, I will uh, talk about the uh, data throttling, which is uh, the process where uh, when you use a certain amount of data on your, if you still have an unlimited data plan, they will, lo they will lower the bandwidth of your uh, data. So even though you still have access to like as much data as you want, you're not going to be able to access as much as fast and that's not acceptable, really, if you have an unlimited <laughs> data plan. That's, that's not cool. <laughs> um, uh, now I will explain how um, the pushing, um, like AT&T and Verizon are pushing some of their customers away to Sprint and T-Mobile because they chose to either start an unlimited data plan or retain theirs. Um, Sprint and uh, T-Mobile, I guess. Um, in conclusion, uh, many cell phone users throughout the U.S. Uh, will be faced with the decision to lose the, their smartphone and limited data plans and uh, possibly deal with the artificial data cap in the form of throttling or switch to a carrier that retains this style of plan known as the unlimited data. Uh, it is, uh, it is, it is the brief yeah. It is the belief of many that the unlimited data plans will be the demise of the networks, but I believe that it won't. I think that they are uh, essential to the uh, growing popularity of smartphones, and they'll be useful in time to come. All right, so Janet, what did you think? I thought it was very interesting oh, yeah. learning about the plan, how some are going to be eliminated, some are still in effect, apparently. And I liked how we used the visuals, that was clear, nothing since that's the Verizon user, so I understood it. 
His thesis was excellent. John did job on it. Okay. Well, I thought you had a very clear statement of what your goal was. I like the introduction. Uh, the personal story, I think, works well, and it identifies a reason why we ought to be listening to this. Um, when you preview the supporting points, they're pretty well laid out, although it really does sound like some of the supporting points aren't su separate points themselves. They're just pieces of information, and you're labeling pieces of information instead of a point. For example, the two quotes. They should be in your supporting points. They shouldn't be a supporting point by themselves. So that, that sounded a little bit awkward. Uh, I think there's a little bit of confusion because the, the information you present suggests that most people don't use uh, the amount of data that they think they do. And that's the motivation for the companies uh, getting rid of these unlimited uh, data plans because it makes it more costly for the customers and uh, they don't really need that much. Um, but then at the end you say, you know, it's kind of ticking you off <laughs> and, and you're going back to it. And I, and I think what you need to do is explain what, what the dilemma is that the companies are facing. They're gonna overcharge customers for something that they don't need, which is gonna turn people off of their company, or they're go their resources are gonna be overutilized and then people are going to run into problems. You need to explain a little bit you know, that more of the balance that the companies are seeking there. And if it was a persuasive speech, I would say that you could at this point be offering some suggestion as to, you know, maybe they need to keep unlimited data plans for people who are willing to pay for them because they do use so much. What did you say you use six gigabytes? Yeah. Uh, you know, without even thinking hard about it. I don't, you know, I don't know how most people calculate uh, what they're using uh, while they're using it. It's one of those things. That there's probably some... Uh, app that keeps track of all of the amount of data that you're using. I don't know that people check those things on a regular basis. You know, they don't even think about that. I'm going to Facebook, you know, 17 times a day. I didn't, it doesn't even occur to me how many, you know, gigabytes that uses every time uh, I'm doing that. So I, I think that uh, there needs to be a little bit more explanation about what the usage involves. To me, that would have been a little bit more informative. You're, I, I think maybe you focus so much on the fact that they're getting rid of the plan and you need to talk a little bit more about what, why they're doing that kind of thing and, and what is the usage like and how customers are either getting a bad deal or it's going to be a better deal or why there's a need for some people to have that much access. Uh, the, I like the statistics that you had uh, that you showed us about usage from 2006 to 2011, the number of smartphone use goes. Obviously, there's a huge uh, increase in demand for uh, the time and the data on those plans. The question is, can, can their services not accommodate that? And is that one of the reasons that they're trying to restrict people's access to it? Or um, are they having to expand? I, I mean, I don't know the technicalities on that sort of thing. So it seems like there should be a little bit more on that. Uh, you mentioned shared data plans, and somebody over here bitched about that. I've heard them <laughs> muttering under their breath. I'm not even sure I know what a shared data plan is. I guess it's a family <laughs> thing or something like that. So, you know, you get, I got five phones, and they're all connected to the same plan, and they got unlimited texting, but on data, you know, you get 10 gigabytes a month or something like that. So if my daughter uses up 8.7, that leaves, you know, 1.3 for the rest of us or something like that. I guess that's kind of how it works. You know, but I'm having to guess on that. That should be something I think that needs to be explained a little bit too. Uh, the visual is okay. I, you need to be a little bit more energetic and forceful. Your pacing is kind of slow. You end up going over time a bit. Not a huge amount, but um, you know, it would be. I think it wouldn't have been a problem if you just have a cup of coffee before you're going. You know, a little caffeine in your system, and then and then I think you'd get through it quicker. Okay. Thank you.